Good evening, I am Mr. Ish. There is a limit out there. I'm calling that the nuisance limit. It's actually very simple seemingly, but when it's handled by most students, it's handled incorrectly. The limit specifically is this limit. As x approaches zero, we're looking at this absolute value of x. Most students will go and answer that zero, and that answer is wrong because I will mention and explain why that is the case in this video. To say limit as x approaches zero, we have absolute value of x, and we're stating that as being equal to zero is wrong on a number of reasons, number of levels. Very easily, you know, absolute value of x is equal to x and minus x. Keeping that in mind, Let's explain this to be the case as being incorrect. You have to examine this from three different areas. One is this, for values which are larger than zero, for values which are less than zero, and for values which are equal to zero. We will do it in this order from top down. For values larger than zero, everything will be handled here using the basic definition of derivative. When you're looking at values larger than zero and you place this into that basic definition of a derivative, what exactly is it that happens? Limit, as h approaches zero, we're looking here at values larger than zero, right over here. We have come into play x plus h in absolute value minus absolute value of x all over h. You know the template for the basic definition of a derivative. When you open up these absolute values, you're looking here at this positive x right here. Remember absolute value of x is equal to x and minus x. What do you get? You get x plus h minus x over h. Again, limit as h approaches zero. The x's cancel out. You have limit as h approaches zero. You have h over h, but the h's cancel out. You end up getting a limit value of one. And that's this. Now let's look at this next one. x values being less than zero, limit as h approaches zero. We again have this format which comes into play where this basic definition of derivative is applied to this function, our absolute value of x function, we open up the parentheses, except now we're focusing on the second, the latter aspect over here, minus x. You end up getting minus x plus h, minus minus x, where we're looking at values less than zero, right? h. You open up all of that parentheses, you get minus x minus h plus x over h, these x's seemingly and normally cancel out. You end up getting minus h over h, and you get minus one, which is fine. Here we have values where x is larger than zero being investigated, we're having a value here of one. For values x is less than zero, we're having a value of minus one, which is fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The problem arises when we look over here at this part, which right here is the crux of this video. So let's examine that. When you examine this specific limit right here for values as x is equal to zero, you of course have to evaluate it as x is approaching zero from the right and then limit as x is approaching zero from the left. It doesn't matter if you didn't show that specifically for this larger than zero and less than zero because think about it, when you're on the absolute value and we're looking at values larger than zero, we're looking in this direction of x axis and for values less than zero, we're looking at this dimension. At any point you picked over here a value, whether you look at it from this point, whether you look at it from this point, it'll obviously be the same. Likewise here, if you're looking at this specific value in terms of x, whether you look at it from the left or the right, it's going to be obviously same. That's why we didn't have to do all of that. But when you're looking here at the zero, where you have a corner, a kind of a kink, then you have to pay this special attention. So let's do that. When you're looking here at values x is equal to zero, from the right and from the left. How does everything play out? Of course, you're going to put everything into that definition of the derivative, except here you'll be applying zero, right? Zero plus h minus zero, because here we're saying clearly x is equal to zero, but we're evaluating from the right and then from the left over h. You open it up, you'll really have h over h limit as x approaches zero from the right. I'm not writing all of this extra terminology. I would put here limit as x approaches zero from the right. I end up getting over here a 1. h over h cancels out, we get a 1. When we do everything here from the left side, approaching 0 from the left, approaching origin from the left, what do we get? We're still looking here at 0 plus h minus absolute value of 0 over h. You open it up, this time I'll write everything out here, limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Now we're bringing in values here which are negative because we're looking here at x values negative as they're approaching the origin. 
x value you will still end up over here having absolute value of h over h i skipped a step over here absolute value of h over h which you would cancel out and you would open it up as h over h right because absolute value of x or h would give you positive x minus x positive h minus h when you open this up you'll get what you'll get minus h over h and you'll simplify that you'll get minus one when x is approaching zero from the left and the right you're getting two different values and that right there is a the problem what happens when you have the right side limit and the left side limit which do not equal then of course the limit does not exist at that point the limit does not exist for absolute value function at specifically x approaching zero it exists in all instances for this specific function when x values are larger than zero when x values are less than zero but it does not exist over here where x is equal to zero and that right there is the problem we can graphically show you why this here is a problem and let me do that when you look at the absolute value function you know it looks something like this if you were to graphically derive a derivative of this function just using the graphic technique and you know what that is where you make these arbitrary points and you look at the slopes of the tangent lines right in all instances larger than zero we have positive slopes we have well let's just say plus one plus one because the slopes are equally steep equally flat when you're looking on these negative sides you have tangent lines which are being formed which are equally steep equally shallow but they're minus one minus one our problem is right over here and how does that graphically depict for all these values larger than zero we know the slope of the tangent lines are always one m is equal to one for all these values less than zero in terms of x when you look at the slope of the tangent line they're always equal to minus one and they come out looking like that what exactly happens here at this zero where the the limit did not exist dne does not exist you end up having this you have a break in the function you no longer have a continuity in the function and hence right here limit as x approaches zero either from the left or from the right there's no limit forming and therefore for someone to say limit as x approaches zero absolute value of x is equal to zero and say that's right well that's wrong the correct answer for this specific limit right over here as x approaches zero would be dne the limit does not exist and i've shown you it does not exist it specifically does not exist for values where x is equal to zero but for values where x is larger than zero or x is less than zero we surely do have limit and that would be positive one or minus one but at specifically at zero limit does not exist so you cannot say that this right here is a good answer because it's wrong if you were to contrast this to a function such as x square and very easily do this entire procedure as i've done for an x square function i won't do it but you can imagine in your mind where you would have looked at values of x greater than zero x is less than zero and x is equal to zero and you're looking at a x square which you know is a parabola it's continuous there's no corner there's no kick kink it's differentiable at all points of its domain if you were to look at its derivative right this right here is f of x and you were to do the graphic analysis of the derivative here you'd be having minus slopes which would be either steep shallow and then here you'd have a zero slope and then here you'd start having positive slopes well in all instances you'd have a line or your graph of your derivative which would be look which would look like this the original function is continuous and differentiable at all its domain and then the derivative is continuous and, and differentiable over its entire domain there is absolutely no kink no break no discontinuity so these two instances of an x square are so different this right here would be 2x in terms of the derivative this is vastly different than that so you cannot assume that something like this is like similar to this in terms of its derivative it might very well be over its entire domain except for x equals zero where you know clearly there's a break therefore when you see a question like this limit as x approaches zero absolute value of x do not put zero as your answer put right here does not exist because the right hand and the left hand limits are not the same and i'll show you why because on the coming to zero from the right you end up at positive one coming to zero from the left you end up at minus one and there's a break over here that break is representative of this corner we have in the absolute value function right over here this corner manifests as a break at x equals zero therefore at x equals zero limit does not exist and that should be your answer so let's end this video with that statement over there and keep this in your mind thank you for watching have a nice day